Good morning and a very warm welcome to you to this, our service of morning prayer. Special welcome as we are all online today. You will know by now that we've taken the difficult decision that although we may remain open for worship in the church building, we've decided that the most loving act and the way to protect everybody is for us to do our worship online only for the time being. I know this third period of lockdown is going to be difficult for everybody, so please do be in touch if there's anything we can do to support you. Phone a friend, phone your pastoral leader, phone one of the team, and rest assured we will do everything in our power to support you during this time. For those of you who, like me, feel the cold, you may feel a small sense of relief that worship is not going to be in our exceptionally well-ventilated building in January. Um, I'm standing right here and right now to tell you that it's blooming freezing in here. So uh, please do make yourselves comfortable in your nice warm houses, I trust they're warm, um, and share in our worship this morning. O oh Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Your light springs up for the righteous, and all the peoples have seen your glory. Let us pray. Blessed are you, sovereign God, King of the nations. To you be praise and glory forever. From the rising of the sun to its setting, your name is proclaimed in all the world. As the sun of righteousness dawns in our hearts, anoint our lips with the seal of your spirit, that we may witness to your gospel and sing your praise in all the earth. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. We say the Jubilate together. O oh, be joyful in the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is gracious, his steadfast love is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And now let us turn to God in sorrow and sadness for those things which have separated us from him and from one another. And let us say sorry. Lord Jesus, illuminate the darkness in our hearts. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, open our eyes to your saving love. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, unstop our ears to hear your living word. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May God, who loved the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Saviour, forgive you your sins and make you holy to serve him in the world through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
We're going to say Psalm 29 together. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of his name. Worship the Lord in holy splendour. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord over mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord causes the oaks to whirl and strips the forest bare and in his temple all say glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. And now Edwina brings us the first of our two Bible readings. A reading from the book of Genesis, the beginning. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day.
A reading from the Gospel of Mark. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May I speak in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This morning I want to take you on an imaginary journey. Far away from lockdown Britain and all the way to the Holy Land. We're going on a coach trip together. So sit down, make yourselves comfortable and do up your seatbelt. We're driving down from Bethlehem, straight down into the Judean wilderness. We're traveling from the familiar and comforting scenes of the stable or cave with the Holy Family, the baby, the shepherds and the wise men. And we're traveling to a place that is dangerous and unfamiliar. There will be lots of things to see and experience as we travel, but I want to draw your attention particularly to three of them. To weirdness, to wildness and to water. The first thing you're going to see and experience is the weirdness of it all. As you come down from the mountains in which Jerusalem and Bethlehem are set, you'll feel your ears popping and blocking, and you'll see the signs which show when you reach sea level. And with some amazement on my part the first time I saw them, the signs which continue to show that you're going lower and lower as you go deeper and deeper below sea level as you travel. Once you're out of the mountains, you'll see a dry, rocky landscape starts to appear in front of you. Driving on the blackest and smoothest Israeli tarmacked roads, you're almost entirely surrounded by rock and sand almost a lunar landscape with from time to time a tiny Bedouin encampment. You'll see plenty of other air-conditioned tour buses on your way. And there's a notable, very 21st century looking petrol station that almost always has a camel lying down on the forecourt. The weirdness of the desert is not to be underestimated. You can look in one direction and feel you've been transported to another planet or back in time 2,000 years and then turn around and order a skinny latte. Perhaps you'll see a burned out tank or two, reminders of the country's past and present divisions. And you'll also see huge swathes of artificially irrigated trees 
growing in plantations, producing the most incredible and delicious fruit. The wilderness is a bewildering, confusing kind of place, which confounds all of our expectations. But the coach is pulling up now and I'm going to invite you to get off, to experience the wildness of the place. Only when the doors open and the heat hits you will you begin to really get a feel for this extraordinary environment. As you walk away from where the coach is parked, you'll probably start to wish you had bought more water with you because the temperatures can be really overwhelming. You'll put your sunglasses on and if you've got sandals or flip-flops on your feet, you will become up close and personal with the sandy, rocky terrain underfoot. As you walk, you'll start to notice what you probably haven't seen from the safety of the coach. That even in the desert, there are signs of life. Tiny, sticky, twiggy little plants grow and provide a minuscule amount of shade and nourishment for tiny, tiny insects. And you marvel at these tiny lives clinging on in such an extreme environment. And as you feel the heat and the rock and the sand and see these tiny signs of life, you realize quite quickly that this isn't an environment for you. You marvel at it for some minutes, maybe even an hour or so, but you know there's no way you could last even a single day if you had to stay here, if you had to fend for yourself. It is truly a dangerous and barren terrain and you wonder at how the Bedouin managed to eke out a living in such a place. But don't worry, because I'm not going to leave you here. We get back on the coach. You can drink the water that you left in your seat and sigh in relief when the air conditioning kicks back in and the coach heads off. We're heading off to water. Because, of course, all the way through the Judean wilderness, and indeed all of Israel and Palestine, runs the River Jordan. How else do you think those plantations of fruit trees are irrigated? The coach is on some bumpier roads now, heading into a demilitarised zone on the border between Israel and Jordan which is the place that is recognised as the baptismal site of Jesus, the site of today's Gospel reading. Now you need to mentally prepare yourselves to see the River Jordan for the first time, especially if in your head it is a huge river like the Severn, or maybe even bigger like the Nile or the Amazon you're in for a bit of a shock. The River Jordan in this place is the size of what, where I come from, frankly, we would call a beck. You could wade across it in not many steps. It's overgrown with reeds and it potters very gently and slowly through the valley. It seems quite safe, sedate, and most importantly, cooling and welcoming after the heat of the desert. But it wasn't always this tame. Decades of diverting water into irrigation schemes to feed the Israeli nation have taken their toll on this iconic river. But look, at the valley it sits in. The valley 
it has created. It is huge. This river has literally moved mountains. Its power and relentless movement, literally moving the rock away. Let's take our shoes off and step in. Even though these days it's quite a quiet and small river at this point. The tug of the water is always moving and you can feel it on your feet and ankles. It's the same water that we have here at St Albans in a little bottle. No longer alive and moving, it's true, but captured and brought home as a reminder that in these waters, Jesus' ministry was inaugurated. And we add it to our font as a sign that in our baptism is also our ministerial inauguration. It's the launch of our lifelong mission to be disciples of Christ. In baptism, our sins are washed away as the dust of the desert is washed from our feet and ankles as we stand in the river. Like the Holy Spirit acting in our lives, pushing us on, comforting us, reconciling us to God and to one another. As you stand in the gently flowing water, you can see how different the land is around here. How it stands in such sharp contrast to the desert from which we've just come. Just look at the lush greenery compared to the tiny, twiggy little plants that were clinging on for dear life on the hillsides of the wilderness. This river brings life. And people come from all over the world to be baptised here and to renew their baptismal vows. So while we, in our imaginations, are here too, we should think back to our own baptisms. Not least because right now we are living in weird and wild times. Things are frighteningly strange now. Nothing in 2020 or 2021 so far have been how we might have hoped or expected just a year ago. We are well and truly out of our comfort zones. So much so that I don't know about you, but I watch the TV these days in a state of confusion, watching a film or a drama where people hug or even just stand audaciously close to one another. It feels strange. Even normal doesn't feel normal anymore. We have been forced to come face to face with wildness and danger. A global pandemic makes us realise suddenly, just as the desert does, how vulnerable we are, how reliant we are on things we normally take for granted. Perhaps you have realised how vulnerable the people that you love might be. How vulnerable you are. Perhaps some of us have even feared for our own lives or the lives of our loved ones. Maybe you're concerned about your physical health, your mental health, or your income. These are not just weird times. They are wild and strange and dangerous. But we have travelled together this morning on our imaginary coach to a gospel place 
a place where we are told so much in just a tiny handful of verses in Mark's Gospel, but also, of course, in all the other Gospels. There's much weirdness here too. John's appearance certainly counts as weird. There's the extraordinary phenomenon of Jesus, who is far greater than John, being baptised by his own cousin. And the extraordinary phenomenon of the one who is without sin, being given a baptism of repentance. And then the heavens open, and down comes the Holy Spirit like a dove, and we hear the voice of God. And this, of course, takes us back to our first reading from this morning, our reading from the book of Genesis. The reading about creation, where we hear about wildness and chaos before God moved or spoke. And we hear how the fierce, untamable was loved into order by a God who moved and spoke then, as he does in this moment of his son's baptism. But he also moves and speaks in our baptisms, conferring the Holy Spirit on us, as he did to Jesus, assuring us of his unending love and sending us out on a mission that he has created for us. And not just us collectively, but us individually. God deliberately created you for a unique role, a unique mission, a vital part in his work, which only you can fulfil. The extraordinary Trinitarian moment where Father, Son and Holy Spirit are experienced together at this moment of baptism is one that can bring us back to ourselves, to our baptisms and to God in these times when all feels weird and wild or maybe strange, alien and dangerous. It reminds us that our identity is not in lockdown, nor is it in normal life, whatever that might mean now, but that our identity is in our adoption by God as daughters and sons. Our identity is in his love and his unique mission for each one of us. And that even in these times, even in savage territory, in wildness, weirdness, chaos, this is shown to us in the water with which we wash our hands, make our drinks, wash away the dirt and exhaustion of the day, and most notably, in the water of baptism. Because this water, the living water, brings life, assures us of forgiveness, and can move mountains. So however you are this morning, however you're coping with the wildness and weirdness of our life, Hear the words of God to you. You are my beloved child. In you, I am well pleased. And now with the church throughout the world and across all ages, let us affirm our faith by saying the creed. We believe in God the Father, 
from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. And now Dan is going to lead us in our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. For our prayers this morning. After I say, Lord, in your mercy, we will respond together. Hear our prayer. Father God, we pray for your church on earth. At this time, Lord, as our doors are closed, help us to open our hearts. Guide us, Lord, where the church can serve. And for your church worldwide, Lord, we thank you for the gift of community for the gift of your presence in place that it is at these difficult times. Lord, we pray, guide us and strengthen us to build your church. In your name. Lord, in your mercy. And we pray, Lord, this morning for creation. These last few months have shown us how important the world outside our doors and windows is. How crucial it is that we can witness the beauty of your creation with our own eyes. And Lord, it is groaning. We are sorry for the harm we do, Lord, to this stunning world that you have asked us to be stewards of. Lord, we pray for renewal and rejuvenation of creation. That it may be cared for. That we may know, Lord, how best to protect this gift you have given us. And Lord, we pray for society. We pray for those at the edges who may struggle at this time. We pray, Lord, that they know your powerful love, your mighty grace. We pray, Lord, that you may guide us, that we may be your hands and feet to those in need. that, Lord, all those society fails to recognise, all those for whom society takes their voice, Lord, let us support them. Let us lift them up. Lord, we pray for those in power those people whose decisions affect so many at the moment and always. We pray, Lord, that their hearts may be guided by you at this time, that their thoughts may be for those who often are forgotten, that their decisions, Lord, may be to protect the needy and the meek. Lord, we pray that they are guided by grace and compassion, that you gift them with wisdom, Lord, to make those decisions which are needed to protect the most. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we pray for our community here in Bristol. 
we pray for the residents and businesses of Bayswater Avenue. Lord, may your spirit come. May it flood these streets and this city. May your power be witnessed and recognised. And Lord, may we be there. May we shine as light in this community. At this time, Lord, may we know how to reach to our neighbours. How, Lord, to witness to you. Lord, in your mercy. And we pray for those who are suffering. We pray for those we know of and for those we don't. For those whose suffering is outward and whose is inward. Those who suffer in any way, Lord, we lift them to you. We especially lift Judith Drazen, Julie Gillen, Beryl Hall, Diane Randall, Viv Robinson, Eric Bevan, Mavis John, Sally Noble, Albert Page and Rosemary Penketh. Lord be with them and in your strength bring them healing. And we remember also, Lord, those who are no longer with us. We pray for Stanley Nichols, Josephine Huckman, Ada Tanner, Francis Young, Mike Stockdale, Phyllis Dawes, William Welsh, Grace Dearden, Joyce Newman, Frank Duell, and Dorothy Nichols. Lord, bring comfort and grace to those families. Be with them, Lord, at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we lift up our own church and our ministers. We pray for Emma, for Mike, for Jan, for Margaret, for Ryan and for Lizzie. May they know strength and wisdom in these coming weeks. Guide them and succour them, Lord. Be with them. Support them and lift them. And we pray for all those affected by COVID-19 and for those countries whose healthcare systems are totally unequipped to provide them with the care that we receive. We thank you for all of those who are living and working in care homes, all of those who are providing health and social care in our community, those doctors and nurses and healthcare workers all who are in the NHS at this difficult time. Lord, we gather all these prayers in the name of your Son, who died that we may live. In your name. Amen. The Collect for the Feast of the Baptism of Christ. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, at the Jordan you revealed Jesus as your Son. May we recognise him as our Lord and know ourselves to be your beloved children. Through Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, 
Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We say the Te Deum together. We praise you, O God. We acclaim you as the Lord. All creation worships you, the Father everlasting. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, the cherubim and seraphim sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all praise, the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you took our flesh to set us free, you humbly chose the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, brought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. May God, who has called us out of darkness into his marvellous light, bless us and fill us with peace. Amen. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.